Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskies. Today I have a single barrel exclusively for Germany. Well, that's not true. It's exclusively for a bar in Dusseldorf and it's run by the Spirit Bomb. Now that's actually Fabian Hess is his name. He bought the bar and changed the name to Spirit Bomb, which I think is great. Um, on the side you can always see what this is. Now basically in America you'd call this a store pick. All right, so we received in Germany two of these. So this is whiskey base 223567, 57.1%. That's all the information that we have. And the other one is then whiskey base 226618. And we know that it was bottled 2022, says so on the label as well. We know that we have 192 bottles. And we also know that it is the, um, there is 51.9% ABV and it was specially selected by Perola, P-E-R-O-L-A, Perola. And um, it's 95 euros for that bottle as well as this bottle. All right, so um, we do have a little bit more information on that bottle. We do know that that bottle, and I assume that this bottle is also the same mash bill, 75% uh, corn, 21% rye, and 4% malted barley. So that's that. What am I going to compare it to? I'm going to compare it to... <sighs> I did not like this bottle, Remus. All right, so Remus 6. I'm just going to get rid of this and say sorry. I did that in my German video and I decided not to. What I pulled out in my German video, I'm going to go over here, is the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Now, Jason, isn't that fair? Yeah, you have 57.1%. Well, I have 60.1% over here. So I have the C921 version. So there is three or six proof points difference. But Jason, the price, yeah, this is more expensive. This is 95 euros. I can get this for 78 euros. So I'm cheaper here. This is a no age statement. This is 12 year old barrel proof. Heaven Hill goodness, in my opinion. This is MGP, barrel proof, cast strength, no age statement whiskey. All right, and so I think it's a fair battle. It's actually a little skewed, in my opinion, towards Elijah Craig because it's cheaper, it's older, and it's, sorry, in my opinion, better. And this is going to be my question. All right, you have $100, you have 100 pounds, you have 100 euros. And you can buy one bottle of barrel proof whiskey. What is it going to be? Barrel proof American bourbon. Which one is it going to be? Is it going to be a Booker's? Is it going to be an Elijah Craig? Is it going to be a single barrel Remus? Is it going to be a repeal, which I don't think you can get for 100 and it's not cast strength, anyways? What is your bottle going to be? All right. And at the moment, today, this evening, with this video, I'm going to go for an Elijah Craig. All right, so I do like a good Booker's, and I really, really, really liked, where is my Booker's here? The 2202 version here. Uh, this is goodness. I like this a tick better than that, but I have the feeling, personal feel, expression here, that the Booker's have more variation between the batches than the Elijah Craig's do. Just my personal viewpoint of the world. All right, so you can first of all see that the darkness here of the Elijah Craig is stronger. And so first of all, we're gonna nose. Okay, I get a tick of the fruitiness, a little bit of a berry, um, a little bit of a leather, a little bit of a caramel. I do get a lot of alcohol with the 57.1%, but I do get a tiny little bit of a milk chocolate going on here. The nose is nice. So as I said, it's probably the 21% rye mash bill here, and it's 57.1%. I would have loved to have an age statement on the label. So we have we have the bottled, um, so selection 2022. Why don't we have vintage 2016? Well, okay, then I know it's six years. Or the vintage 2018, then I know it's four years. All right, it does say here straight bourbon whiskey without an age, so it has to be four. Can't be three, can't be two, can't be one, so it has to be four. But is it more? Hmm. And the aging facilities, 
at MGP and also the other sites or site they now have. Um, not a rickhouse, not a typical um, wood temperature change, but concrete steel buildings. Yeah, reinforced concrete where the temperature um, variations are limited compared to other places around Indiana, Kentucky, and so on. Okay, let's try them. Now, um, my cali calibration whiskey, control whiskey, <coughs> excuse me, was a 57 proof whiskey. This is 57.1, so I should be okay, right? Let's see. Mm. Mm. The thing that this whiskey gets is heat. That's some heat in there. I'm not, I normally do not have a problem with uh, bourbons, cast drinks, 60 plus percent. I'll show this in a moment with the 60.1. This is 57.1. This is a younger whiskey where the heat is still there. Um, the longer it's in the barrel, often the more the heat is a little bit eliminated. It has a good flavor, don't get me wrong. I get an, um, a candied apple, a candied green apple is what I get. Um, there is the caramel in there. There is a little bit of the pecans. There is a little bit of a leather moment. Um, but it does have a certain youthfulness to this whiskey. Originally, I thought I was going to hope it was going to be six years of age. My gut feeling says it's more of five. I might be wrong. It might be eight. All right, so I don't know exactly how old these are. It says on the website here, remusbourbon.com, the bourbon slash single barrel cast drink. Ideal for bourbon lovers and collectors. Remus single barrel bourbon is an annual release offered at barrel strength in three mash bills, which mash bill, write it on the label, with each featuring its own unique high profile flavor, high proof prof, uh, flavor profile. Each year, barrels are selected by participating retailers for my historic Ross and Squibb distillery in Lawrenceburg, Indiana, with no two retailers' barrels tasting alike. Remus Single Barrel offers a new sipping experience in every bottle. Single Barrel doesn't stay on shelves for long, so check out um, the pickup to find the bottle near you. And if you want your bottle, your local retailer to carry it, just tell them Remus sent you. Now, I almost get like a shiver down my back when it says Remus sent you. Remus, George Remus was not a good guy. All right. I mean, he was a pharmacy. He was actually able to buy whiskey in the prohibition. And then he would actually steal his own whiskey going from the warehouse to the places that had the prescription medicine thing. And then he would actually ca cash in the insurance money for his products being stolen, sell the whiskey illegally to the speakeasies. And he became one of the biggest bosses of the mm, illegal bootlegger movement in the Prohibition. Not only that, he killed his own wife and then was the first person successfully in the United States to plead uh, temporary insanity and got away with it. And then they write down here, tell them Remus sent you. <laughs> I mean, I know. I cannot actually say, hey, good job in picking that name. I'm rather like, why are we glorifying a actual criminal? All right. And it's not the just the bootlegging part. All right. I don't know if you've ever seen The Great Gatsby with um, Leonardo DiCaprio in it. That was based loosely on the life of George Remus. No. I think um, MGP, I think Lexco have chosen the wrong um, name to promote and go out there. Yeah, I mean, gangster photo, right? Come on. No, no, no. Is this the is this the type of role model we want to be putting out there in the world? I'm sorry. Once again, no. All right. So this has given me a little bit of time to acclimate to the whiskey, also in the glass. The nose is basically the same. Let's try it one last time. We'll go over here, put some water in this, and try that. Mm. 
I'm too weak. It actually puts a little tear in my eye. There's heat here. There's too much heat here, in my opinion. Too much young heat. It does have a nice finish. It so yeah, and then oh, and then all oh, heat, and then it's like oh, okay, good. If this was a forty-five dollar bottle, go for it. But it's a ninety-five dollar bottle. What are question of the day? What are you paying for a Remus store pick and cast strength in your location in your store in America? I don't think it's going to be over sixty some dollars. All right, I might be wrong, but write it down. What is what? Is, what are you paying for a Remus store pick in cast strength? Um, I'm paying ninety five euros over here in Germany, which I think is way, way, way too much. Especially since I can get this for under eighty euros. All right, so I'm saving fifteen euros, and I'm getting a twelve year old age statement with more proof and more flavor. So let's try. Hmm. Oh, yeah. There's a little bit of heat. I mean, hey, 60.1%. But nothing like this. This is the mature, supportive, ah, oh, deep, dark, complex, rich, brown sugar, fruit, leather, pecan, caramel, goodness. It's got a depth to it. It's got a toffee, a caramel, even a little bit of creme brulee, brulee in there. Um, I think the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof beats Booker's. I think it beats often um, Jack Daniel's Single Barrel Barrel Proof. Um, definitely beats my Baker's Single Barrels um, that I have at the moment. It beats, uh, for me, Wild Turkey Rare Breed. It beats a lot of the old um, Landon's Straight from the Barrel. It beats hands down, in my opinion. Um, the new stuff that's out that's no longer the 8 to plus years of age, but much, much younger than it should be. This is just a fabulous, fabulous whiskey, in my opinion. And if I had 100 euros burning a hole in my pocket and going out, wanted to go out and buy one bottle from the big boys out there, that would be it. All right. So now going back here, I did add a little bit of water. So let's try this and let's do our final opinion. Cheers. Mm -hmm. What is really, really interesting is the heat kicks in at exactly the same moment again. Now, the intensity is not there. It's as if you tow, if you had a song and it crescendoed and then it went back over here and you turned down the volume, the crescendo still happens, just not um, eardrum blowing moment. And at, at cast strength, uh, barrel proof, it's almost like taste bud blowout, but here it goes, oh, wow, it's there, and then it goes back down, and it gets much sweeter, and often that's the case with a good barrel-proof um, bourbon. You add some water down to it, you bring it down to 50-some percent, and it's going to be a little bit sweeter. Um, this is a solid C. I'm too weak. The whiskey is maybe just too strong. Um, uh, value for money, it's a D. I, as I said, a 65 euros max, not 95 euros. That's my personal opinion of what this whiskey should be at, at least for a barrel pick. Let's take a look. Yeah, I just looked online. 63, $65 dollars is the normal off-the-shelf price. It is a no-age statement. Um, always... Um, 75% corn, 20% rye, 4% barley. Um, proof, um, what I'm finding out there, 125. So I have a 114 um, proof here. And um, it's usually um, no age statement around 60 years ish. So, as I said, 65 euros. And if you get a good bottle, go for it. Ah, go to the store, try before you buy, and enjoy it. My bottle, as I said, see. Yeah, it's one of the things, A, why haven't you bought it? B, buy it. C, you buy it. You can buy it if you want. D, you don't need to buy it. And F, why was that even made? I don't understand. All right, so the value of money is not just there. So two questions a day is what is your average price for a 
bottle pick of the George Remus single barrel barrel proof. And the second question is, you have $100 burning a hole in your pocket. What are you going to buy as a barrel proof bourbon? Write it down and we will learn from each other. Thank you very much. All the best, Whiskey Jason. See you soon. Bye-bye.